It's been pouring rain outside all morning, which is sort of my one of my favorite kinds of weather. I love rainy days and rainy mornings, especially in the summertime because I am not a summer person. And I'm in my favorite spot in the house, my favorite cozy retreat, even though there's nothing up here. I just like to come up here and hang out and film videos. Today I have a Mercedes shop, so I feel like it's been months. I've really tried to curtail my beauty shopping and I just haven't been wanting to accumulate so much because I have a lot of products, as you I'm sure are well aware. And actually I'm in my head conceiving of how to get everything organized, create a bunch of packages that I'm going to give away to people on Patreon. So I think I'm going to film a patron exclusive video of all of those products and different bundles and give people the opportunity to say that they want me to send them one bundle or another. I'm still working all of that out. So I feel like the things that I shopped and bought over the last, I guess this stuff is really over the last month or so, um, are things I needed with a few fun little things. So I have an order from Pettivore. I haven't ordered from them in a while. Uh, and then in this Sephora bag are a few things from Sephora. If you watched my vlog, I actually showed the Sephora items that I got. And then this is also a Credo order. I visited the Credo here in Chicago. And then I placed a small Glossier order. I even brought wipes up so that in case I want to swatch and show you guys um, anything, I can do that. Why don't we go ahead and start with the Pettivore order because it was the first thing I ordered. Actually, it was one of the, yeah, I think it was the first little beauty haul I did once I had moved um, to Chicago. So the main reason I placed this order is because I wanted to get the Juice Beauty Stem Cellular Repair CC Cream back into my life. This was one of the first green beauty products I used. If you watch any of my videos from probably my first year on YouTube, 2014 to 2015, I was likely using this in makeup videos. I was very dry skinned at the time and that's why I wanted to get this back in my life. I got it in the shade Desert Glow, I think. I wanna say that I used to get the shade Warm Glow and I think that they have since expanded the shade range. So this looks to be okay, my main issue why I stopped using it is because it just got to be a little bit too heavy and oily and greasy as my skin type normalized, which I am happy to report after, you know, how long have I been here now? A month, I guess, a month and a week maybe. I feel like my skin is starting to normalize and that's with multiple trips. I went to Las Vegas, I went to San Antonio. My skin is starting to feel more normal, like how I'm more used to it being. So it could have just all been some big moving and stress-related transition. I'm not really sure, but my skin is sort of rebalancing and renormalizing. However, I still am liking more moisturizing products. I have gotten some requests to do um, dry skin specific makeup looks. So this would definitely be something I would incorporate in that and I'll try and get something like that up. Uh, but in case my skin like decides it wants to just be normal combination again and not dry and dehydrated. Yes, I really do recommend this as a tinted um, SPF type of product. I think, yeah, it's S Broad Spectrum SPF 30, 20% uh, zinc oxide. Uh, I really do recommend this if you are dry skinned. It gives a very luminous dewy finish. I like to think of this product as uh, a cleaner version of the IT Cosmetics CC Cream. It's thick, it's heavy, it's emollient, it's comparable to Suntegrity Tinted, but um, I really like this product. I'm, I'm happy to have it back in my rotation. I also got a bottle of the Isla 3-in-1 Nail Color Remover. I have this as the individual wipe packets, which I really like, and I just wanted to try kind of the freestanding polish also because when I do my manicures, uh, I'll need to do cleanup sometimes, so I'll just dip a Q-tip in nail polish remover and, and clean up the cuticle, so I needed kind of a standalone nail polish remover. This is probably my favorite eco nail polish brand in terms of how the polishes wear on me, their base and top coats, and also their nail polish remover wipes. So I'm hoping that the polish remover itself lives up to my expectations. <laughs> it's an acetone acetate free formula. And what I have just found with the wipes is that they're very, very cuticle nourishing. This is by far the nicest nail polish remover in existence. I've heard other people recommend some other ones, so if you'd like to share in the comments, please do, but great brand, really like their products. Happy to get to try that. 
This is actually a repurchase backup. This is the Red Apple Lipstick Lip Liner in the shade Natural. I'm not gonna open it because I have one to finish up, but I've used it in lots of uh, previous makeup videos. It's kind of my like workhorse lip liner and truthfully, Red Apple Lipstick is not a brand I shop from a lot. Their lipsticks have just kind of never really been formulas or colors that have stood the test of time for me as I've done declutters and I realize it sort of looks like I'm wearing a bow tie but this is a little sports bra on the top. Sorry to interject, sometimes I just have these like random fleeting thoughts as I'm filming. They had sent me uh, three of their lip liners a couple of years ago and I didn't like the ones that are that are sort of retractable and like more of a creamy type of lip liner, but this is a traditional sharp pencil lip liner that you sharpen um, and everything sort of similar to the Jane Iredale lip liners or MAC lip liners. It's just a great formula. I like it a little bit better than the Jane Iredale lip liner formula and again on me this is a really nice, it's a pinky nude on me but it goes with everything from like coral to pinks. I mean, you could use this to just give your shape, your lips some definition before doing a bold. I really like it, but keep in mind that nude lip liners just really vary based on one's skin tone, and I need something that has quite a bit of pink in it as opposed to more like peach and brown. I was just perusing their, I think they have like a whole section devoted to minis, and this was I think a best-selling product of theirs that I wanted to try. It's the Galaxy Milk Illuminating Beauty Oil. Ever since I feel like those cover FX Tin Man looking <laughs> highlighting drops came out a couple years ago, these sorts of products have been very in vogue. And I don't really have a liquid highlighter. I mean, you know, like Maya Chia does that liquid highlight, Gressa does a liquid highlight. My issue with the Eco ones is that I've always felt like the shimmer or the mica particles or whatever they're using tend to separate from the oil content of the product. I mean, this looks very nicely emulsified and illuminated. It is a bit more on the golden end, but Let's see. Yeah, oh, yeah, it's very gold. <laughs> I'm not sure if I was quite banking on that. I'm gonna have to experiment with how I'm gonna use this. This could even be pretty for sort of decollete or shoulders. It says apply to tops of cheekbones, temples, brow bones, bridge of nose. It does have a slight scent, but it's, you know what it kind of reminds me of? That um, Kai fragrance, K-A-I. It's a little bit gardenia-ish, I would say. Um, but yeah, I just kind of wanted to try. It wasn't that expensive. I think it was 16. Kind of bummed they didn't include any samples, don't they usually? Oh well. Also one of the reasons I'm ready to do um, a big clear out and send products away to people is that I've amassed enough little boxes to repurpose and send away, so. Okay, why don't we do this Glossier order uh, quickly because it's a little bit more boring <laughs> than the Credo and the Sephora stuff. Uh, okay, yes. I um, I just needed a backup of the boy brow. I got one in clear. I toggle between clear and black. I'm wearing black in my brows today, but it just depends. I, I like having both. I see no real reason to spend more on a brow product. I think this is 16. You know, I, I've sort of been tempted to try the Hourglass one. I've sort of been tempted to try the Kevin Aquan, but yeah, I don't know. Nothing. I just, I'm, I'm happy with boy brow. Well, I'm sort of neither here nor there with Glossier. They don't excite me that much as a brand anymore, but Boy Brow is one of my favorite products of theirs. So because I had a little bit of credit to use, I did also decide to try the Lash Slick. I didn't have any burning desire to try this, but again, I have a little bit of credit stocked up, so I was like, I guess why not? I've heard such mixed things on this mascara, and it, what, it's, what seems to be the common experience is people don't like it initially because it's more of sort of a separating and lengthening natural mascara, but then as people seem to play with it more, they kind of like it. So that could also be that the formula needs a little bit of time to dry out once you open the tube. It's a rubbered bristle wand. Reminds me a lot of the Well People Mascara. Yeah, that's I guess like kind of the closest thing is the Well People Mascara wand. And I think people also like this as a layering mascara, which is something I can get down with um, if I have the time. So I just decided to give it a try. I uh, truthfully don't have super high hopes for it, but we'll see. I kind of do need a new mascara in rotation. So there's that. And then I was just, I was like, what else can I get? <laughs> I'm not interested in much, but they sell their own little, cotton rounds, so I decided to see if they're any good. 
I mean, they're pretty overpriced for cotton rounds, I think. Or maybe not, I forget how much these even were, but it's a 60 count. They look quite substantial. And then I got a sample of the You perfume, which uh, I've just been sort of curious about. This was like an add-on sample. It's young, it's young smelling. Sort of agnostic on it, to be honest. It's not bad, actually. I mean, it's, it's a very easy fragrance, I think. It's fresh, kind of has a little bit of a floral top note. I don't hate it. Worth sampling, I think, actually. So now, why don't we do kind of the more fun stuff? Let me save Credo for last, because I know people are primarily here for Eco Beauty, which I am too. <laughs> Don't worry. Ooh, that perfume is like getting in my nose. I had a little bit of Sephora gift card credit to use and I wanted to pick up my birthday gift. You could do Bite or Glam Glow this year. Frankly, they feel a little uninspired to me, to be honest. I think the gift last year was also Bite. But in this one, it looks like you get um, a mini amuse-bouche lipstick in the color Chai. I don't really care for the formula of the amuse-bouche. You get a matte cream lip crayon, which I do like the formula of in Glacé, which I've tried and don't care for. And then you get a little agave lip balm. I've tried the agave lip balm in the past. Um, oh, actually I've only tried, oh, so this is a lip sugar scrub and the lip balm. So I, I'm probably gonna try and use this. For the lipstick and the thing, I'm gonna put them in my to give away pile probably. I wish Glossé worked on me, it makes me look uh, corpse-like, unfortunately. I got the Becca Lip Intuitive Glow Gloss. I've been testing it and I really like it. It's just a clear sort of gloss. I'm not a lip gloss person, but more recently I have kind of liked just a little bit of gloss placed judiciously on my lips. Like for an everyday look, I'll like to just sort of line and lightly fill in my lips with like the Red Apple Lipstick Lip, lip Liner and then top it with a t the tiniest bit of gloss. My favorite is the Modern Minerals Pop Parashka. And I just kind of wanted um, something else to have around. This is a very pleasant product and it came on my radar because TT Sandra gave it a very, very glowing review. It has like kind of a nice smell that reminds me of something that I used when I was like a kid. And it's not too, um, not too juicy looking, if you will. It's nice. My tip though for, I kind of want to get a little white because my hands are getting a little grody. My tip with glosses, and I'm sure a lot of you probably already do this, I do not like to apply lip gloss doe foot applicators on my lips on top of lip liner or other lip color. Um, and also I have found, because I'm on like my second or third tube of the Modern Minerals gloss, when I was using that, just like how you normally would with a lip gloss, applying it directly from the doe foot, I found that it picks up bacteria that way that can make the product not quite turn, but the doe foot applicator will, will develop a bit of a funky smell, but I'm very sensitive to that kind of thing, so that just could be like my weird nose, but I find that if I just take the applicator, swipe a bit on the back of my hand and do a finger application, it extends the life of the gloss because it's not getting constantly contaminated and like gunkified with lip color and your lip bacteria and stuff like that. So that's just my personal preference. I feel like I get a lot more mileage out of lip gloss tubes when I do finger application. I've, I know that that negates a lot of people's preference to have lip products that are finger free because people are germaphobes, which I get, but I guess I don't really, I mean, if I'm out and about and my lips are bare, I will apply something like this directly from the tube. Why am I going on this little like lecture about doe foot applicators? I just wanted to share my tip because I do think it's, it's worthwhile to um, swipe and dab versus just, you know what I mean? Okay, then this was like a, a very, I don't even know like what to call this purchase. I have not bought any NARS products in years, years. They were one of my first like luxury or hot, not even luxury, but is NARS luxury? They're like a high end, higher end makeup brand. Um, I guess when I think of luxury now, I think of Clé de Peau, La Prairie, that kind of thing. NARS really captivated me as a brand when I was in college. This was the time of Sex in the City when I feel like she really popularized the NARS blushes because she would like open her drawer and she would have like little compacts of NARS. And NARS was one of the first makeup counters that I ever had my makeup professionally done at. And they've always been a brand that I've just thought is, is very beautiful in their execution. I had my makeup done for a friend's wedding in, 
I want to say like when was that 2011 maybe I was wearing a red dress and the makeup artist nailed my makeup I really liked what she did and she basically did a smoky eye using this NARS eyeshadow duo in the shade Cordura See, I'm like already getting my grubby fingerprints all over this like beautiful packaging. They don't look like much in the pan. They're two different shades of brown. It's sort of a, a lighter goldeny honey brown color and a deeper sort of espresso chocolate color. Both have flecks of gold running through. I'm gonna swatch them right now. I was just in love with that eyeshadow look. I should have bought the duo then. In fact, like, I think she was pissed that I didn't buy more makeup. I remember it very vividly. I think she was pissed that I didn't buy more makeup from her. Bought a concealer, a lip gloss, and maybe an eyeliner, I don't even really remember. But I should have gotten this because this was really kind of like the star of the look. So I have had it on my wish list for the last however many years that is. You know, I don't even really wear a lot of elaborate eyeshadow, but I thought that these would be very versatile colors because I am wearing liquid liner today, but I've been loving doing pencil liners smudged out with dark shadows, and I don't know, I just kind of wanted to try and recreate that smoky eye and don't really have any colors like this. I don't really have a lot of eyeshadow, period. That's my little story behind NARS Cordura. <laughs> All right, now let's end with this Credo order. So um, there's a Credo in Chicago, it's in Wicker Park. I ventured in and I wanted to take some of my makeup empties in, which I did successfully do, but at my credo anyway, I've heard it's different at other people's. Um, they only let you bank five at a time, which is I think a hundred points maybe. Credo has a rewards program where you accrue points that get you samples. It's very similar to Beauty Insider at Sephora, like the rewards that you can get. They have like hundred point things you can trade in or 500 point things. I think five makeup empties is 100 points. So I've heard of people, like someone had left me a comment once and said that she took a whole like bag full of empty makeup and got 1200 points. The guy that helped me, he was so sweet actually. It was super, super nice and he was just like, we can only do five at once. I was like, that's totally fine. That just means I have to come back every month and, and buy things basically. I mean, not buy things, but like I can come back every month and deposit five more empties because um, I have a ton. I mean, I have enough to last me like forever probably. I had, a, if you saw my last makeup empties video, I'm just gonna take like five in at a time and do like a little shopping every time I go. Good for my channel, not good for my wallet, I suppose. So here's what I got when I was there. The first thing I picked up is the CV Skin Labs Body Repair Lotion. This is amazing. Um, CV Skin Labs sent me some of their products last year. They sent me this, they sent me the Rescue and Relief Spray, which I'm on the dregs of finishing up, and they sent me their um, a mini of their Skin Balm, and I loved all three products. This is such a superior range, um, body care range, and it's hard to find body care products that are really noteworthy and that you want to repurchase. And in fact, when I was using this, I was sort of like, yeah, it's good. I'm not sure it's worth, I forget how much it is. I think it's 36. When I was using it, I was kind of like, yeah, it's nice. Like, I'm glad I'm getting to try it, but I'm totally, you know, not loyal when it comes to body care products. But I've been trying to use the Acure Unscented Body Lotion and some other ones, and I just keep thinking, I kept thinking about this. I was like, I really want that CV Skin Labs lotion back. It's because it's a very lightweight consistency. It's perfect to mix with body oils if you like to do sort of an emulsion type thing like I do. It's just, it's very healing to the skin. It feels like it has a heavy water content, but it's water content that actually does seem to stay in the skin, if that makes sense. I feel like a lot of moisturizing body products are very just heavy, and I don't really like that feeling on my body, particularly in the summer. Um, I love that it's in a pump. Um, it was easy to get all the product out of it at the end. I liked it enough to repurchase it myself and I will continue to repurchase it. This line was originally formulated for people undergoing um, chemotherapy or radiation and it's meant to really soothe inflamed skin. Also very good for you know anyone with sensitive skin or other skin conditions. Okay then I've been wanting to try Jillian Dempsey products for quite a while. Decided to pick up a lid tint and one of her coal eyeliners. Next month, maybe I'll venture into the cheek color territory. So first of all, the packaging is absolutely gorgeous. I love it. I love the, um, I guess it's like a copper colored 
embossing. I went for one of the lid tints uh, and I got just got the shade Dew, which is the translucent lid Dew that is just supposed to give you sort of an editorial glossy lid look, which I'm kind of obsessed with that idea and concept and this seemed like a very wearable, just easy user-friendly way to kind of start experimenting with that. You know who talked about these recently was the Anna Edit, the Anna Does Makeup. She used some of the colored ones and she said that they, her review of them sounded quite similar to how I feel about RMS eye polishes. They're going to crease, they're not going to have the longevity that you might expect from another kind of heavy duty lid lacquer. Like I know Surratt does some lid lacquers that I'm somewhat interested in. I'm very, I think that this is a sort of a very cool makeup trend. But I just wanted to start with something very easy, especially because one of my favorite easy eye looks if I'm not doing liner is I'll take a little bit of a cream highlight like the K.O. Weiss or the Tata Harper and I'll just dab it in the center of my lid and it gives like a glossy sheen. So I was like, this is going to be very easy. So I have been playing around with it and using it. I really like the effect that it gives. I'm not even sure that you'll be able to see it on the back of my hand. Okay, the only thing is it does have a little bit of a scent and um, it's... To me, it's like not the most pleasant scent, but it's like a sort of a, it's really, really hard to explain, but it's so weird. I can smell it like on my eyelids. I don't know what's wrong with me. It does sort of dissipate, but it's a little bit off-putting when I first put it on. It's just sort of almost like that Play-Doh plastic cosmetic smell, which is a little odd, I guess, given that it's a more natural brand, but it's certainly not enough of a scent to deter me from wanting to use it. I've experimented with doing this and a little bit of like the K.R. Weiss highlight over top. You could press powders over this. You are going to probably get a little bit of creasing, but the effect of even just this with tight lined black liner and a bunch of mascara, I think is so pretty with bronzy skin and like a bold lip for summer like fuchsia or coral. I'm so into it right now. So I really like this. These got raves from you guys. I remember talking about this in a previous video or on Instagram and a lot of people were like, I really like the, I really like Jillian Dempsey um, in general. Do got a lot of raves, so I am happy to have it. The first ingredient is sunflower seed oil. It's also castor seed oil, some waxes. I don't quite know what's giving it that smell, <laughs> but um, I'm weird with smells. Like I can't use the Hint Beauty Sun Prep because the smell bothers me so much. So just take my that part of my review with a grain of salt unless you have a hypersensitive nose. But again, not enough to detract me from wanting to use it. Now the eye coal, I swatched all of them. And in fact, like if I like the formula of this, I would consider getting others, including the brown and the navy and maybe even the black when I need a new one. I haven't tried this yet, but it's a very substantial um, pencil with a smudger on the end, which I probably will not use. This retails for $20. And I decided to get the Aubergine shade. What's it called? Deep Burgundy. Oh, it's very, very gorgeous. It's a very, very deep brownie purple, I would say. And that's why I liked it. It didn't look, so a lot of like purple, eyeliners um they have a little bit too much blue or violet in them for my taste this is sort of the right it has it's more of like a cool deep burgundy and i just had visions of doing like a very smudged out top liner that i wing out with my finger a la violette so pretty also is lower lash line i can't remember the name of uh the guy that I met in the store who was so nice to me and so helpful. I was sort of asking him how he f had heard or, f or felt that the wear time on these were, and he said that he had heard that you have a little bit of time to kind of work with them and sort of smudge them out, as I can see here. But once they're there, they do kind of set and you do get pretty good longevity. My preferred eyeliner formula of choice are the Trish McAvoy gel liners. That's what I use to tight line. But as far as eco eyeliners, my favorite are probably the Antonym. I have their black pencil that I really like and works quite well on me. And the Au Naturel pencils are sort of a gel formula and those work on me as well. So I'm really looking forward to trying this. Okay, then in my sort of little checking out impulse purchase, section. I decided to try two of these sheet masks by Whamisa. I was like, Whamsia? Whamisa. I asked which one was the most hydrating and because to me the hydrogel 
mask with organic flowers seemed to be, but they said the organic seeds was kind of the typical moisturizing one. This one I think is also sort of moisturizing brightening. So I decided to just get both. They were $7.50 each. They look like this. Uh, I really have enjoyed uh, testing the Orgade sheet masks, so I just decided why not. I actually sent a couple of these to my Italian subscriber, Mickey, and she had very good things to say about them. They do three or four in the line. I'm really excited to uh, get those on my face. Then I got a few little samples. At checkout as well, I got some of this Love is Beautiful organic herbal tea, which I actually think I'm going to go make right now. This sounds so good on this rainy day. How cute this little packaging is. I'm obsessed with it. My friend at Credo threw in two of the Suntegrity 5-in-1 tinted sunscreens in light. I've already gone through a full one of these. I took it with me to Las Vegas and San Antonio, and um, I'll definitely use this one up too. Here's the thing, I do really like this product, and the shade light is, is very good on me. The issue comes when over time, the longer the product you have the product, and particularly I think when I have decanted product that I have scooped out, because if you, I don't have it nearby, but the actual packaging for this product is in a large silver tube with a pump on the bottom and once the pump stops working there's still a fair amount of product in the tube so I've gone through two of them in the shade light scooped out all the product put it in a little pot and used it and that will oxidize the product very intensely so it will just appear much darker on your face but I found that just using this little sample like over the like two week period it doesn't really oxidize and I actually don't find I am wearing it today I don't really find that it oxidizes other makeup or oxidizes throughout the day, although in the past I kind of feel like it has. So I just think that there's so many variables depending on how your skin is behaving at a certain point in time, the weather, how old the product is. It's just, there, guys, there's so many variables with skincare and makeup. It's just, it's insane. It's hard to review because all we can do is review at any given point in time also with our retrospective knowledge, I guess. So that's everything. I hope that you enjoyed seeing all of this stuff. Please do let me know what you've picked up recently if you have any suggestions for the next time I'm in Credo. I am very interested, but probably not going to purchase anytime soon, Susan Kaufman products. Um, they look interesting, but really expensive. Um, I'm very interested in I think it's pronounced Patika, P-A-T-Y-K-A. It's a, a Parisian eco skincare brand. They've been around for a long time and Credo carries them. Credo also carries Infiore. Pi is another brand I'm so into right now or like rediscovering my love for them as I've loved them for years. Um, Jillian Dempsey, they have some I think the brand is called Spella liquid lipsticks that I'm curious about trying. I would like to get one of the RMS lipsticks at some point, but when I saw them in Credo, none of the colors looked super unique to me, but I didn't do the whole swatch and really belabor it. I was much more interested in, in Jillian Dempsey stuff um, the last time I was there, but I'll be there quite regularly now, so I would welcome any of your recommendations. Thank you for being here. There's going to be, obviously, I say this in every video, but lots of good stuff coming up both on here and on Patreon. If you are on Patreon, I'm going to be doing a lot of divesting of products soon, so please hop over for that. Um, I will have June favorites coming up here on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys really soon. Bye.